my dear students it is the second uh, video of drawing and labeling the different surfaces of cerebral hemisphere now i shall uh, draw the medial surface very easily before drawing uh, you have to make an outline with a finger like this in the exam khata i am doing it with my whiteboard marker so it has become so prominent but when you will do it with your pencil make a fade line okay it is the width and just make uh, it double to uh, create the length okay okay little bit more and again it is the length and i shall make the rectangle okay here is the rectangle now we have to find out the midpoint of each arm of the rectangle just i have to assume that it is the midpoint okay then i have to find out the uh, midpoint of the half of each arm i will put my frontal uh, pole at this region so my uh, temporal pole will be situated at this point so i am uh, drawing the temporal pole here first but i shall not draw the posterior ramus here as it is the medial surface okay and after drawing the temporal pole it will go like this and here is the occipital pole and it will go in front like this this and the frontal pole is situated at this point and then it will unite with the temporal lobe okay i shall make the line prominent now now i have to draw a special structure situated at the medial surface that is termed as the corpus callosum which is a large white band the commissural fiber and connect the uh, both sided cerebral hemisphere with each other for drawing the corpus callosum we have to find out the area i i shall draw the uh, corpus callosum from here i shall start the corpus callosum from here and then go behind and end at here okay there are some parts of the corpus callosum one is the bending area that is termed as the genu and then i shall go parallel to this line okay parallel to this line clear very nice and then double the line like this so it is the genu the bending area and just anteriorly and inferiorly uh, the line that come backward uh, this is the rostrum okay this is the rostrum of the corpus callosum here is the rostrum this is the genu and here is the body and this is the splenium of the corpus callosum i shall uh, fill the area with the color uh, as it is the special structure in the medial surface and is a large white band and is frequently uh, given in the ospi examination it is the corpus callosum just above the corpus callosum there is a sulcus that is the callosal sulcus okay just above it just above it it is the callosal sulcus and uh, above it there is a gyrus and then there will be another sulcus that sulcus will start from this area and come back and go upward like this in between the callosal sulcus and this one is the cingulate sulcus this area is termed as the cingulate gyrus clear here the central sulcus cut the superomedial border and come at the medial surface so in front of it here the precentral sulcus also come here and behind the postcentral sulcus also come here okay uh, so this area will be termed as the paracentral lobule and area in front of this sulci here this area is the medial frontal gyrus okay actually it is the medial surface of the frontal lobe now come to the corpus callosum again in this area it is the rostrum 
here is the genu here is the body and here is the, and here is the splenium i have told it before the septum pellucidum uh, that extends from the rostrum genu and the body up to the fornix and here is the fornix and it is the white matter uh, that carp over the thalamus it is the fornix and just below it there will be the thalamus in between the anterior column of the fornix and the thalamus there will be a foramen that is termed as the interventricular foramen when you will study about the csf brain is you will hear the name again in between the two thalamus there will be the third ventricle and in front of the third ventricle there will be the lamina terminalis actually the lamina terminalis is the collection of the gray matter that extend from the rostrum of the corpus callosum up to the optic chiasma okay now come here here there will be two sulci it will be termed as the anterior parolfactory sulcus and here is the posterior parolfactory sulcus in between these two the area is termed as the parolfactory gyrus and behind the posterior parolfactory sulcus it is the para terminal gyrus here in the occipital lobe there will be the parieto occipital sulcus and another sulcus that will uh, start from the occipital pole and extend forward just above the inferomedial border and unite with the parieto occipital sulcus just behind the splenium it is termed as the calcarine sulcus the area in between the parieto occipital sulcus calcarine sulcus and the superomedial border it is termed as the cuneus and the area just behind the upturned portion of the singular sulcus here this quadrilateral area it is termed as the precuneus okay it is termed as the precuneus here there will be another sulcus that will be termed as the collateral sulcus and the area in between the calcarine sulcus and the collateral sulcus is the lingual gyrus it is the lingual gyrus and here just above the collateral sulcus this area is the parahippocampal gyrus here this area is the parahippocampal gyrus just in front of the parahippocampal gyrus this area will be termed as the uncus here it will be termed as the uncus and the uncus will be uh, separated from the temporal pole by the rhinal sulcus and there is another more sulcus that is termed as the occipitotemporal sulcus medial to the occipitotemporal sulcus this gyrus is termed as the medial occipitotemporal gyrus and lateral to the occipitotemporal sulcus this area is termed as the lateral occipitotemporal gyrus so it is the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere i hope you can draw the medial surface uh, anatomically correct and very nicely in your examination khata thank you very much thank you for watching